All right, this is the unit intro video. These, uh, it's technically like kind of two days worth of notes. If you weren't here for this, I think these first ones are on, I don't know, we'll see in a second. But um, these notes don't apply to any particular topic. This is stuff that you'll need for the whole unit. So that's why it's just titled intro. So it doesn't apply to any one topic in your grade book. It's just kind of background knowledge you'll need for all of them. So the first one is, uh, is hearkening back to the graphing. And uh, one of the labs we did is we tossed a ball up in the air and then did a video recording with the uh, graphing program and see what the graph would look like and then kind of talk about why. Um, so which is the correct graph uh, in case you miss a lab? But the answer, now the most common mistake was this one. This one says the ball starts near hand Start leaves your hand and it's going slow, and then as it goes faster, 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 really fast, slow, 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 slow. But what happens when you toss the ball up in the air is it goes fast at the bottom, stops for a second at the top, and then goes faster as it falls. So this is the real one. It leaves your hand going fast, slow, slow, slow. This is the top. It's going zero. And then it changes direction. So this is like velocity negative. And as it changes direction, it's going faster, 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 more and more negative velocity. So the answer is that one. Uh, the topics were, is this graph kind of led into this first part. Why do objects accelerate? We'll be discussing direct and indirect relationships and types of forces that act on an object. Now this video is gonna be long because it was technically two days um, so we'll kind of, I'll tell you how to break it up. We'll skip the vocab. So this starts on page, this might be 11. I have a feeling this is 11. So when we talked about this, um, we did an Angry Birds video. And as the birds flew through the air, their forward motion was constant. You don't need to take notes on this, just kind of pay attention. The up and down motion was this negative acceleration, constant. So what do objects need to accelerate is like the first question. Objects need a, objects will only accelerate when forces are acting on them. It's a kind of a big core idea. As, a, as the angry bird is flying through the air forward, as soon as it leaves the, the slingshot, nothing's pushing it forward, nothing's slowing it down, so it just kept moving at constant velocity. However, when you throw something up, it slows down, hits the top, and then comes back down, and it's going faster and faster, because it's constantly being pulled downward by gravity. So that constant gravity equals constant downward acceleration. Okay, relationship between small and large forces. Um, okay, the, another lab that we did, if you weren't here in class, some of us got to this, some of us didn't. But we, um, we rolled a ball down a ramp. And the people had to design how to make the force on the ball bigger and smaller. And this is what people came up with. You roll the ball down the ramp. And then we recorded the video and graphed it, and guess what? This one had big acceleration, no surprise. This one had small acceleration. Because it's, you know, there's less force here, so it accelerates less. More force here, so there's more force. And this makes sense, right? The faster engine should be faster acceleration. This guy's a better sprinter. This guy's a better distance runner. So let's go back to this. I want you to um, write this down. Acceleration is directly related to force. This symbol right here means related to. That means if force increases, then acceleration increases. Or the other way around. If you decrease the force, acceleration decreases. So 
same thing. Uh, we did another experiment that not everybody got to. Put a little, I put a little cart right here. So, this little thing right here has wheels. And then there's this kind of weight. Call it five kilograms. This weight's providing the force as the rope goes around the pulley. This, if it's a small mass, and then we took the same scenario, only we doubled, we put stacked two carts, two times the mass. And guess what? If the force was the same, acceleration was less. When there was less um, mass to move, increase, sorry, mass goes down, acceleration goes up. So this is a, what we call a indirect relation. If you decrease mass, then acceleration increases. And it looks like this. Acceleration is indirectly related to mass. This makes sense too. Jockeys are tiny. We wouldn't put this guy on top of the horse to race because it would be more mass for the horse to carry and the horse is uh, still sane. So we've got those two vocab words covered. And this is Newton's second law. When forces are unbalanced, that's key, underline that, an object will accelerate related to the force and indirectly related to the mass. The formula looks like this, or more commonly, force equals ma. So that should be it for that page. And now we're going to the next part. So try this um, warm up. Pause the video and see if you can figure out if you triple the mass, what would the new acceleration be? I'll give you a hint. There's only one logical answer. Here's the answer. If you increase the mass, does the person get faster? No. Maybe stay the same, in all likelihood they lose acceleration. If you because it's acceleration is indirectly related to mass. So acceleration is one, and if you triple mass, that's the same as one third the acceleration. If it was half double the mass times two down here. It would be half the acceleration. Okay, types of forces. Friction is a... Friction is a resistive force against motion that slows things down. So if you have a box on the, on the ground and you're pulling it with a rope, there's friction between the box and the ground, and that's force of friction against, this is the next one, applied force. Could be anything, pulling, pushing, kicking, engines, we call engines an applied force in a car, car engines. So if you're pulling with an applied force, Friction is fighting against you, slowing you down. Air resistance is just air friction against motion. As you move through air. Tension, here's a box hanging from a rope. This would be tension, force from ropes. We won't need to know that a ton, but you will hear it a lot in your textbook. So just be familiar, that just means force from ropes. Gravity is down. <laughs> Hope you all know what it means. It's from gravity. It's 
So if we have a box on a table, there's gravity pushing down. The normal force we'll get to later. Okay, so now page 13. Page 13 is titled Free Body Diagrams. Please write this down. My name's Tim Boucher. Okay, I'm not going to worry about this. But let's do some sample free body diagrams. If you're kicking a soccer ball, and we'll call this one at impact. We have force applied from the foot. The ball is resting on the ground. So there's also force of gravity. And but the ball's not going downward because the ground is actually holding the ball in place. So this is our normal force. Force normal of the ground working against gravity to keep an object stationary. That's in, at impact. This object will accelerate to the right. Now, once the ball's in the air, it feels a little bit of friction, or air resistance, sorry, air resistance, a lot of gravity, and will accelerate mostly down. And its velocity, by the way, is to the left. Sorry, acceleration should have been left over here. I just caught that. So it's moving this way, so air resistance is backwards, but it's mostly being pulled down. Here's another one. Uh, we're going to ignore this. And we'll call this like constant force example. This previous one here, by the way, this was a, um, we'll call this a temporary force. Because you kick it and then that's it. You're not touching it anymore when it's in the air. Our constant force example would look like this. Here's a drag racer. Big wheel in the back, little wheels in the front. The car feels some air resistance, some friction between the metal. There's also gravity and the normal force as the ground pushes up. So the, the car isn't falling downward as it sits on the ground. These two forces are balanced. They cancel each other out. But this definitely feels a huge applied force from the engine. So this will accelerate to the right. Okay, here's your assignment on page 12. Draw three or four free body diagrams. Label all forces acting on the object, as well as the direction of the unbalanced force and the direction of acceleration. Well, here's the example. This is like the soccer ball before, only I've labeled the force unbalanced. Here I go again. to the left. This board isn't working anymore. And then in the air, this would be an example of a temporary force. I can't get this thing to stop. <laughs> this would be an example of a temporary force because there's contact and then while it's in the air we see unbalanced force is mostly down, some back, acceleration is mostly down. So I want you to make three of these, mostly like stick figures. One constant force, one um, applied force, sorry, one constant, one general, and one solving for gravity. So I also want you to do, yeah, 